Believe it or not, it's another VO podcast with three guys who are full-time voice actors at different stages of life, career, and location. But they have formed a bond and work together to hold each other accountable and help each other on their VO path. Three guys from different backgrounds working together, helping each other, and sharing with you along the way. Hey, what are we calling it again? It's It's another another VO podcast. podcast. Okay, okay, guys. Sorry, I get it. Come on. You're not my dad's. Hey, I'm Troy Holden, and you're listening to It's Another VO Podcast. I'm joined by Alden. Alden. Alden? <laughs> Alden, Sh- Alden Schumberg <laughs> and Jake Sanders. I'm trying to trying to turn him into a freaking grocery you're store You're a voiceover, chain. man. Get it it's, right. It's Alden, and, Aldi. Alden and the chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> Alden! It's yeah. Aldi and Whole Foods. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, Guys, today we're going to talk about demos and samples. But before we get into this, um, I was doing a little looking around at some things on the Internet the other day. Uh, you know how we get in a rabbit hole sometimes. It's a dangerous and, place. And I, 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 the reason I came up on this was I had talked about a few weeks ago about uh, Radio Shack. And I did a little spot, you know, talking about how they had lost so many stores and blah, blah, blah. They had 2,000 stores in 1999. Now they're under 400 how things have changed and they went away. Do you uh, do you guys know that um, Radio Shack sued Auto Shack, who is now AutoZone? They had to change their name to AutoZone because Radio Shack sued them for using the name Auto Shack. So okay. that drove me into a rabbit hole of what other companies had stupid names or goofy names and changed them. So I'm going to give you the old name and see if, just real quick to see if you come up with who Ooh, they are now. I like this. All right. Uh-oh. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. All right. All right. This first one is called drive yourself. And it was spelled you are drive dash you are dash self. Who are they now? Drive yourself. And I'll give you a hint. You'll get it. Tom Brady. Hurts. Hurts. All right. Yep. That's hurts. Yep. Woo-hoo, you got that woo-hoo. one. <laughs> all right Let's this go. one Let's you guys go. should get this one because the name pops up quite a bit these days um let's see they used to be known as uh meta but now they are again facebook facebook yeah okay okay, okay. uh what about uh used to be known as dotson that guy that uh hired that guy nedry to take down jurassic park <laughs> <laughs> That's close. All I can Nis- think is of his Nissan. car. <laughs> yeah, Nissan. Yeah. Nissan? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Nissan. All right, this this came out as Brad's Drink. Oh. Drink. Bourbon. Pepsi. 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 You got it, Pepsi. Why, why Brad's Drink? Am I missing that, I something? guess it was a guy that invented the formula. Then why did you know that, Alden? I almost said Alden. I don't want to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's here's the next one. I think, I think the... The host may have mentioned that to me before. I think I did. Oh, uh, we may have talked over about here. we may have talked about a few of these before. He wasn't hey, counting on my, give you all He wasn't counting on like Jake He wasn't counting on me as an older fellow having a yeah, good memory. Good memory. Oh. All right, here's your next one. Pete's Super Submarines. Subway. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Good one. Good one. Yeah. All right, here here's a really good one. Back rub. Massage envy. The host it's, shared this with me too. It's or I did not know that it was Google. It's Google. It's Google. Yeah. Oh. All right. Now here's a really good one. Blue Ribbon Sports. Blue Ribbon Sports. Blue Ribbon Sports. Was I that ESPN? Well, they are now it's now known as the Greek goddess of victory or Nike. Nike. Okay. I was thinking Nike, but I was like, there's no blue. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know why. I, I was thinking Adidas like either, sports but... coverage. Like maybe that's what now, ESPN I, starts. I've only, <laughs> I've only got two more. Cadabra. Cadabra. As in abracadabra. Just cadabra. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cadabra. Amazon. Oh. oh. Yeah. And here's our last one. And somebody will get this one because it is still known by this name in some other countries. Marathon. Petroleum. Marathon. Marathon. Oh, I'm thinking of the company Marathon Petroleum. Yeah, Marathon. Um, Marathon. Uh, sheesh. 
Yeah, Go that one's it. tougher. Is that Federal Express? Or like a, uh, is it a delivery service? No. FedEx? No. FedEx? It's, it's, uh, the commercials here lately have been, uh, I can't remember the format, but the, it would be like a, a, a mouthy celebrity in the backseat of a car. And then they would give them one of these and they would become themselves again. It's a Snickers bar. <laughs> yeah. A marathon, a marathon. bar. Marathon one of these bar. and then go yeah. on a marathon. Yeah. yeah. So in it, 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 it's some weird ones. You're hangry. Some weird names on a marathon? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. And and none of this segues into what we're talking about. Clearly. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and today on VO Podcast, we're going to talk about branding yeah. yourself. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. The, or they used, to be, they used right. to be called samples and now they're called demos. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But well, I used to be called Alden. <laughs> yeah, now you're I'm now you're Aldini. Aldini, <laughs> Aldini. <laughs> called Alden. Oh man, that was good. Well, well, let's get into demos and samples because there is a difference. There is a different use for both of those. Uh, how you you know where you need them, why you need them, when you need them, and this may not be our longest podcast ever, but I think for those of you that are new, this is important because you're struggling with, uh, you know, oh, demos, demos are expensive. I've got to get demos and you may not need demos yet. And we'll talk about that as well. So let's first, uh, let me ask this question, ask both of you, are you, uh, currently using a self-made or a professional demo? Uh, professional self-made. demos. All right. One of each there. That's good. I have both. I actually have a mixture of my professional and self-made up as a 60 second demo, and um, using some spots I previously had. So all three of us have different Mm -hmm. successes with what we're using, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Alden, you have an agency that came off of your self-made demo. Yeah. Uh, Jake, you have agents that, did you have some that came before your professional demo? No, I I had a professional demo made uh, in my second year. And I got agents off of that demo, but I was told, you know, there's not really a lot of variety to it. So I then that later, it wasn't right away, but later on I got more, I got more professional demos made. So I, I've never, I had one not self-made demo, but I had like a a friend of mine make the demo for me. And again, Mm -hmm. I think it might've said this before we made it in his living room, not like a treated area. And he gotcha. just edited it down. And I put that on my, that was the very first thing I ever put on my voices.com account. And that first, and that's all I had up there. Like I did not know that there was algorithm and stuff like that to it. I thought I was getting access to every audition, which we came to find out. Oh, I'm yeah, not, yeah. You know what I mean? And I was just auditioning and that's, but I was getting lists. I mean, that first year I got like th- over a thousand listens just to the one demo I had on there, you know? Wow. Um, wow. But you know, obviously as I progressed and realized, oh, I need a lot more and I need samples yeah. and demos and that that's obviously I added more, but, um, I did not reach out to agencies with that audition. I had an, I had a film agent at the time that I showed it to and she liked it, thought it was cool. But at the same time, she's also like, I'm not really in the VO market just because it is so saturated. And I was, you know, and I was yeah. like, okay, so yeah. is it saturated? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, well, could, you could say that. Yeah. So, so that's kind of proof in the pudding that, you can with a well-produced self-made demo. So let's, let's draw a line right there. It's got to, you have to be able to really tie the audio. It really has to match the voice and the spots. You've got to really have a grip on that or it won't work. You can't just slap it together. And I hear those a lot. And I had coaches tell me that that's, you did that yourself. Like they couldn't believe that. They thought it was a pro demo. Right. And so, yeah, but, you know, when you've been in music production, as long as I have, you, you have a pretty good idea how to mix stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're brand new, don't attempt it. Don't go get the, um, the free downloaded music that sounds like all this corporate organ <laughs> bouncy music, you know, that, that's ding, not ding, what you ding, hear. Ding, it ding, needs ding, to ding, sound ding. like an actual spot. Yeah. Um, I don't advise people either in stealing spots Mm -mm. because if you're sending that out, these uh, producers, these agents, and they know they probably sent that audition out for that spot and they know the spot. So I I highly recommend you at least get someone to write spots for you. You can hire copywriters for that. Um, Or if you're creative and you can do it yourself, that's fine. Um, So, 
from that aspect, yes, a demo can be self-produced and you can have some success with it. Uh, I landed my first three agents with my own demo. It can be done, but is it as good as what I have now? No, probably not. You know, probably not. Um, I've got the, you know, the, the better stuff now. And has it made a difference? And as I've reached out to agents lately, I haven't reached out a lot lately. Um, that's something I need to do more of. But uh, the feedback I'm getting is, you know, even when I replaced it with the current agents, yeah, th that's really strong. We like it. So um, what about samples? Do you guys occasionally put together your own samples because when we're talking online casting, voice one, two, three, voices.com, even when we go to Upwork, Fiverr, Badalgo, Voice Planet, Cast Voices, wherever, they're looking for slotted individual samples based yeah. on style, mm -hmm. you know, conversational, friendly, real person, announcer guy, blah, 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 empathetic. They're wanting you to tag that stuff that way, and that's how you get heard and seen. So are you guys doing a lot of your own samples for that type work? I have not done a, I, I have not done my own samples. I just take I take the audio from completed jobs that I've found, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I've turned those right. into samples. So I, right. that's Good where point. I'm at. Yep. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. That was another thing I was going to ask is do you use actual spots? For samples versus yes. fake spots so not every that, single one but the ones that i like for sure or ones that i think yeah. if i'm missing something like in a genre maybe then i might try to find a specific job i've right. done that is close to that right definitely so so there are so many outlets when you start piling this on top of each other i can make my own samples i can pay to have samples made or i can pay to have a demo made i can take work that I've done, if you've been at it for a little while, and compile those as samples, individual samples on the online casting sites. So let's draw a couple of lines. Online casting sites, direct marketing and production houses, and agents. All right. Mm -hmm. Three three separate ball games here. Let's have your opinions on who gets what. Hmm. Uh okay. As far as your di like okay is, are you talking about like who gets the samples versus the demos? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I think really across the well, okay. Online casting sites and agents definitely demos, but online casting yeah. sites also get samples. Yep, yeah. Production houses, I would probably say just demos, but that's just out of my experience. I but that being said. When you're direct marketing, a lot of times you're wanting to direct them to your website and your website right. should. Yes. See, I made this mistake early on. I say mistake. I made this choice early on to make my my first website was really just more of a portfolio versus of versus a, a service website where people could come and, and reach out to me, contact mm -hmm. me to hire me and right. a portfolio kind of thing. So I made that change. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you want them to come to your site, which is where you can point out, you have a section, I have a page called Recent Projects, and you can check out my voice in action. That's not obviously a sample made by myself. And that's not, you know, and that's not a demo. It's something that someone hired me for. They go, okay, they like this guy enough. They And they put him in this video. It gives them, puts in that scenario. Mm -hmm. So at, again, out of my personal experience for production houses, I don't even send my demo. I just send a link to my my website. They can go. I tell them where they can go find my demos, but that's more so to direct them to my website, and that's yeah. when they that's when they can hear everything else. But I don't have samples that I've created on my website. It's just the finished project products yeah. of of projects yeah. I've been hired for. Good yeah. point. And I'll, I'll often have a production house that'll reach out to me and say, "We're we have a client looking for a voice like yours to do this kind of project. Do you have anything you could share with us that you've done recently?" That we can show to them, you know, so I've already built a connection with the production house with my demo. So they knew who I am. They know what I sound like. They put me on their voice roster, but now they've got a project that maybe they feel needs a specific touch and they want to know their client wants to know and be, be, be certain of this guy has done something like this before I can trust him. So I can send them, you know, a sample that of something that I've done in the last three, four months, that's kind of close or adjacent right. to what they're looking for. Right. Right. So starting out, um, you, know, you don't have to really be in a hurry to have the full blown demo if you can get a handful of samples to get mm -hmm. you started. So you go to, um, 
you know, the, the online casting and you decide you're going to pay a membership and get on voices or voice one, two, three, and you have to have, I would recommend several samples because the more you have, the more variety, the better, uh, yep. you can, you can pick how that needs to go, whether you've got a, you know, a hard sell upbeat younger sounding sample, then you've got your empathetic, like an insurance or hospital sample uh, that where they can hear that nice heartfelt red. Then you may have a more of a storytelling or a documentary sample, or there's so many different samples you could put on there. And, and like mm-hmm. I said, these you could either do on your own or get help with. Um, so yeah, absolutely for online casting. But as Jake and Alden have both pointed out uh, quite pointedly, <laughs> <laughs> Demos are needed for agents, direct marketing, production houses in your website when you're ready for that. Now, some people can put some samples on their website to get started, but if you're driving a lot of traffic to your website, you want it to be a one-stop shop. It needs to be sharp, you know, and those those demos need to be there. Yeah. Um, next part of this is let's let's go to the demo side. Um, what makes a good demo producer? That's, that's something I get asked sometimes, you know, because I've, you've done a professional demo. Yeah. Well, why did you pick that person? What made you want to pick that person? Um, I know I, Jake, you, Jake, you had experience with this, with the same person. So what, what was your take? Well, okay. The first one I picked was I was because I had went to a demolition derby with Tish Hicks, like Tish Hicks at least once a month or maybe once every other month. Uh, she hosts a demo listen, demo listen derby where you can give <laughs> what I had, which was what was my initial demo. I sent that out and, and they give you feedback. Well, she typically has like a guest on with her in this particular one. She had a couple who were like a duo team. One was a voice actress and one was a producer, but they do on the side, they write and produce demos for people. So when I was ready to, I reached out to them and they seemed, I liked what they had to say, the feedback they gave me in the demo listen derby. So I was like, okay, they seem like a really cool introductory place to go, you know, get this demo going or whatever. And, uh, that's what made me reach out to them. Then the second time I got professional demos done, I reached out to this person because they were very well known in the industry. And I had done some coaching sessions with this person And I thought to myself, you know, I liked what they were able to get out of me, but I also know that sometimes just people seeing who does your demo can be used as a marketing tool. So there was Mm. two things behind it, like, oh, okay, this guy went to the person of demos to get his demos done. So that was in my mind too. Now, as far as what makes a good one, I think someone who's, uh, you know, takes the time to, like, when you get a professional demo done, one thing that, that should be asked of you is, okay, send me a list of your likes and don't likes brands, anything that you like kind of support, depending on the kind yeah. of demo you're making for in this instance, I'm talking about commercial and corporate narration. Um, that way they can hear what you are into because it's going to be more, it's going to be able to be more personal on your side of things, you know, for in your performance, because you they want to, you know, I don't want to have to do, um, uh, a demo and then like one of my spots be about depends because I'm not wearing them yet, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm just saying like, uh, hey, that, now. go on now. What are you saying? Yeah. How is it? He gets age into every I, podcast. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perspective, I guess. No, but, um, Oh me. anyway, so that's definitely one thing you want someone that's going to take note of that and then write scripts that are kind of tailored to you in a, in a sense. And then mm-hmm. you're going to want someone who's going to, let you know if you read when you when you're in your session. Let you know it's like let's try something different or let's do this again and and give you tips to change things. I mean, like yeah. you don't want to like spend all day doing your demo and and you shouldn't spend all day doing your demo. But anyone that's just gonna like have you read it once or twice and say okay, let's move on without without telling you without giving you some kind of feedback to go off yeah. of or at least feel confident about it. Yeah, right. Then that that says to me like oh they don't care they don't care how this sounds. You want someone ultimately who's gonna care. And then you yes. want someone who's going to, uh, you know, make sure that you have exactly what you want, how you want it. And that means when they send mm-hmm. you your demo, if you hear something you don't like, you write them back and say, I don't like this. I'd like to change this. And then they work with you on how they can fix it. Mm-hmm. Now, luckily, the the one I went with uh, was very much like that. Um, and uh, I I felt I felt good about my demos getting them back. Uh, that being said, so I yeah. would like for um, what I would be looking for in a producer 
would be somebody who knows the state of the voiceover industry. What, yeah. is, what is it that clients are looking for? What is the hot voice, the hot styles? Um, and then help me get the most out of that where my voice meets, it intersects, you know, with, with, that, with that genre. Mm -hmm. So I, wanna, I want a producer not to just be someone who knows how to produce demos, but knows the industry. Yeah, because right. I want my your your voiceover demo is your business card, mm -hmm. and I want my business card to say I know how to do what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with every bit of this. And then you throw on top of that the production quality that yeah. they yep. are putting out. Um, and, and the ones that are the most successful are the ones that really take the time to get to know you and your strengths, mm -hmm. whether it is through. You know, uh, a Zoom call they do with you uh, prior to that. I know there's one um, um, producer that does that. They spend almost two hours with you on a Zoom call. They get to know everything about you. Your likes, not just likes, dislikes, and brands and all that, but your hobbies. Uh, they even get into colors, music, um, all kinds of things to where that forms into your personality, you know, and they go by, you know, knowing what your hobbies are and, and this, 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 then they can tie brands into all those things, mm -hmm. not just, oh, I like this, 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 this. Okay. When you're an outdoor person and your hobby is, you know, riding ATVs on the weekend, but you didn't really mention Honda and Yamaha earlier, but now maybe, well, what kind of ATV do you ride? So they get deeper and deeper into it to really tie those products to you because you will be more real and authentic with products you believe in. And, you know, the idea is, well, they hear that in your demo and then whatever you, you audition for, you're going to keep doing that. I'm not you just know, the you're president. Be, I'm yeah, a client. There you go. That's there you go. <laughs> Hair club for men. That's right. <laughs> I really need that guy. <laughs> <Let me see. laughs> So Shut not up, to, I didn't I say know. anything. Look at, look at those flowing locks. He's waving it, combing his fingers through his hair. So, so with all that said, um, <laughs> and, and I don't want to beat a dead horse to death because everybody's always talking about demos and you don't hear samples spoken about as much, but we are here lately. I think it's become more of a buzzword in the last year because of the changes with online casting and how people can go in there and search and how the keywords matter when they're looking for you. And that even does matter when you're talking about uh, uh, good old nasty Upwork and, and, and Fiverr yeah. as well. All that stuff comes into play with your samples. They even, you know, now I think on Fiverr have it to where you can go in and add keywords to all your samples, you know, extra keywords. Well, uh, and I well, think they, that, they make you. Yeah. I think with there being, um, more and more voiceover people jumping into the industry. A lot, a lot of new, fresh blood out there. And there's a lot of good talent coming in. But I think clients want to know, is this really your work or is this just demos? Yeah. Because demos can show what you can do, but they also want samples to show what you have done. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's important. So if well, you're that new goes into back voiceover, to the thing, though, though, I mean, like, if you can, like, but that, but that, you, they want samples to see what you have done, but that means that you—that's not created, you're self-created samples, right. though, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, right, right, Sorry, right. No, that's that's, that's that. what I'm saying. They want actual okay. work, and they want to hear your demos. So your demos can help help you show over a wide variety of things that you can do, but your samples, for me, this is how I'm defining them a little bit differently. Show show pieces of work that I have done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's important. So as soon as you when you as soon as you have good stuff to show, show it off, show off yeah. your samples. Yeah. yeah. What what I also like in a lot of the uh, a lot of the producers is you are always going to record yourself in on your dog, your studio. You're just yep. going to send them raw audio, yep. which is what 90 percent of the time you do anyway. And yep. that shows that you can take my audio and give it to a producer and they can make this sound fantastic. You right. know, so th there's, it's a two sided thing. You say, well, this was, this was recorded, you know, in, in my thing. And, and I know we do some things through agents. It goes through source connect and it's recorded on their side, but it's still your raw audio feeding right. through. Yep. So you are not misleading anybody. Uh, some people say, well, a demo is so misleading. It doesn't sound like that. 
when I do it. Well, well yes, it does. It, the it, voice does. Yeah, it can be misleading because if for one, if you went into a studio and recorded on a fifteen hundred dollar mic, and you're trying to tell people that that's what you're going to sound like when you go in and and you're on your cheap <laughs> mic, that's not going to work. Right. Same yep. if you're if you go in and you get coached through a demo by a pro, and you can't self direct to give that same performance, it is misleading. Yeah. So you have right. to make sure that you can reproduce what's in your demo yep. in yeah. your booth. Yeah. And a good producer will not take you on if they don't feel like you're far enough along to make that demo and yeah. you can self-direct right. and do that. Um, right. I, I know when I first got into this, that was the first thing that I was told, you're not ready. You know, you've got, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And I needed that advice because I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know. And and uh, that was great advice. And then after going through workshops and coaching and et cetera for a uh, year and a half more, then, yeah, I'm ready to do that demo. And I went back to that same producer who told me that. And they said, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're definitely ready. I hear your work all the time. Let, you know, let's do it. And, um, you know, a demo session for some people may last an hour. Uh, it may last 30, 40 minutes. It just depends you know, on how many different reads they want. But if you are doing a really good job on looking at the copy, self-directing and, and jumping in there, as Jake said, well, wh why don't you give me one where you do this? You know, they may send you way out in left field. And I know they did on one of my <clears throat> spots. And I was so glad he did because it turned out to be a highlight. It's yeah, not yeah. my it's not my voice. <clears throat> Uh, that I would hardly ever get to use ever. But when somebody hears that in a demo, they go, whoa, that's different. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't, you know, I wouldn't have thought he could have done that, you know, and that's what you want. You want you know, some surprise in there as well. They got to get that variety in there for you and put, you know, of course, put your knock it out of the park up front. So that's a whole lot of gobbledygook about demos and <laughs> samples and, and all that. And this is mainly geared toward a lot of our newer folks. And that's, you know, we want to reach back on topics like that and make sure that, you know, you're hearing some ins and outs and some different opinions. As we say, we have three, we have three different perspectives and we try to offer them. You just got three totally different perspectives yeah, on right. all this today. So hopefully some of that will help you. And as we always say, you do your research. You make your choices. There is no right or wrong way. If there were, one of the three of us would be wrong, right? One of us would have been wrong. Or two. You can't us. get, True. you can't ever get an agent with a self-made demo. False. False. You can if it's a well done, self-made yep. demo, well produced. And you don't can tell them you... until after they sign you. <laughs> yes, don't tell them. You never tell that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know that I ever had anybody ask me who made my demo. Well, if it's right. good enough, what's right. the, what's the, what's the, right. what's the, they're not right. going to ask, you know what I mean? If it's cruddy, no, they want to know. And if you've got a coach and he will, he will tell you the truth about your demo. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, I had that happen. I ran, ran mine by a coach. The recommendation was to move a couple spots, but Mm -hmm. But then they said, who did that? And I said, I did it. Really? <laughs> you know, that was the end of it. Yeah. And and this was a person who also does some demos for people. But, yep. you know, the, the feedback was, I don't know that I would get another one done right now. I'd wait. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and that was what I did. I kept pushing what I had. Your coach can tell you you're going to get work on this demo. Yes. You yes. can get work on this. Yes. Uh, you'll get good, honest feedback from yep. a good coach. Well, demos and samples, I hope we have given you enough to stir around with and, and see how that works. Closing closing remarks, guys? Um, no, not that I can think of. I mean, I just, if you got samples, make sure you're just yeah. putting them on your pay to plays. Yep. Um, that. Leave, leave. That's where they belong. Um, you know, if you want to put on your website for now, that's fine. But when you start booking stuff, start putting the stuff that you get back. Like, start putting those finished projects on there. Right. And that, and that way, that people can come to your website and see what you have done. Um, and then just keywords, man. When you get on those pay to plays, the keywords are where it's at to help the algorithm find you. So hopefully, you get more eyes yeah. and ears on your yep, stuff. Yep. Yep, yep. And don't if you're going to record your own demo and <clears throat> you make sure that you run that by some. People who know what they're talking about, yeah. some coaches. Yeah. But you need to don't just record something and then say, I'm done. You've got it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice yeah. to record quality things. 
and yeah. to and it takes practice mixing a demo. Though these these great people who make great demos for voiceover, they didn't just start doing it. They've been working in the industry for a long time. They know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's why they're pros. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Lots of advice, lots of opinions. That's what we do here. That's why it's called It's Another VO Podcast. Isn't that right? You need yep. to email us. You can. Uh, that is um, another VO podcast at gmail.com. We'd like to hear your opinions. Uh, yeah, go listen to our demos and hammer us. We don't care. We yeah. can take it. We're big boys. Yeah. We can oh, take yeah. it. Um, so there's, you know, as we say all the time, more than one way to skin a cat, more than one way to, to get your business going. And yes, good actual samples. Yep. They are booked work. Uh, yep. Definitely, definitely use those. All right. We'll be back soon with another one, another VO podcast for Jake Sanders and Alden Schoenberg. We thank you and we'll see you soon. You've been listening to It's Another VO Podcast. I'm Alden Schoenberg. And I'm Jake the Snake. No, you are not. Settle down. All right, all right, all right. I'm Jake Sanders. And I'm Troy Holden. Join us weekly as we spill the beans about our challenges being full-time struggling voice actors. Yeah, and by the way, my girlfriend says you two better get it together because she doesn't want me carrying you two on this podcast. Sayeth the voiceover rookie himself, but be sure and join us on the next episode because I guarantee it, Jake will do something worth hearing. And what do you mean by that? No, really, what does that mean? Dude, dude, let it go. It's all right. It's all right. Hey, where are you guys going? Hey, don't you kill the feed. Don't you dare kill the feed. Hey, where where are you going, Alden? Troy, what are you... Are you... Come back!